Chapter 2, From the Darkness Comes Gluttony Pleasantly tipsy off my glass of wine, I decided to check on Lady Roxy before heading back to the hovel I called home. After the incident with Riffle earlier, I was worried about her. Riffle was as sly as they came, but I didn't think he would lash out right away. Still, I couldn't get his cunning smile out of my head. I knew a weakling like me would be no help to Lady Roxy if anything happened, but I could at least provide her with a human shield. I followed the moonlit roads to a point from which I could see the castle gate. Lady Roxy stood resolute at her post. I heaved a great sigh of relief. I had worried over nothing, it seemed. My soul at ease, I wished her good luck from the bottom of my heart. As I made to leave, I spied a flock of shadows scrambling up the eastern castle wall. That area was a blind spot for anyone on guard duty, and it was only by coincidence that I spotted it from where I stood. Bandits. It had to be. I could think of no one else who would climb the walls to enter the castle in the middle of the night. I rushed down the street toward Lady Roxy. Lady Roxy. Trouble. What's wrong? Shouldn't you be at home? I went for a walk to clear my head. There's a group of people scaling the east wall. Are you certain? Yes. I saw it with my own eyes. I wasn't sure Lady Roxy would believe me, but she looked me in the face and said, I trust you. I'm heading over there now. Will you look after the gate while I'm gone? Yes, of course. She passed me the gatekeeper's spear. Good luck, Lady Roxy, I said. Leave it to me. Lady Roxy unsheathed a silver sword from her belt. As long as I have this with me, I'll be fine. She sped off toward the eastern wall. Instantly, she disappeared into the darkness. Wow, those holy knights are fast. Then I heard the screams of the men inside. It was easy to imagine quick, gallant Lady Roxy cutting the bandits down one after another. Judging by their screams, the bandits had come in significant numbers. There were definitely more than two or three. Still, Lady Roxy was a holy knight. A group of lowly bandits couldn't catch her off guard. Sure enough, the sounds of battle soon faded into silence. Just when I thought it was over, a lone man staggered out of the darkness toward me. As he drew closer, the moonlight brought his features into sharp relief. My breath caught in my throat at the sight of him. The bandit's right arm had been cut off, and as he stumbled toward the gate where I stood, he tried desperately to stop the bleeding with his left hand. His face was pale, sickeningly white from blood loss. I gripped my spear. I wouldn't let him get away. It didn't matter that he was a dying human being, he was a thief, a violent criminal, and he needed to be stopped. If he escaped while I was covering for Lady Roxy, the blame would ultimately fall on her shoulders. I couldn't let that happen. I had to kill him. He's wounded, I thought. Even someone as weak as me should be able to handle this. Gritting my teeth, I thrust my spear with everything I had. It pierced the bandit's heart. He gripped the spear with a wild, intense glare, then fell on his back in a horrific spray of blood. His arms and legs spasmed for a time, until finally his body stopped moving. There was no mistaking it. The bandit was dead. I did it I killed him. I, huh. I felt something flow into my body, followed by the echo of a metallic voice in my head. Gluttony skill activated. Stats increased, vitality plus 120, strength plus 150, magic plus 100, spirit plus 100, agility plus 130. Skills. Added, identify, telepathy. Stats increased. Skills added. What's this voice? What's going on? Then the most wonderful, glorious sensation that of an eternally empty stomach truly filling for the first time. I'd never felt so satisfied in my life. While I was lost to this ecstasy, Lady Roxy returned to the gate. She took my hand and looked me over, checking for injuries. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Is he alright? He looks pale. Oh, I'm so worried. What was that? I could hear Lady Roxy's voice in my head. She wasn't speaking, but somehow, her words swam into me. What's wrong, she asked. No, it's nothing, I said. I'm fine. He's fine. Thank the gods he's okay. Lady Roxy's relief echoed through me again. When she released my hand, 
Her voice faded. Were those, her thoughts? Was I reading her mind? Stranger things had happened, hadn't they? Perhaps this was an after effect of the shock of battle. Perhaps I was simply imagining her voice. It wasn't as though I could just go touching Lady Roxy again to make sure. She was a holy knight, after all. In any case, holy knights were phenomenal. In total, ten bandits had broken into the castle, and Lady Roxy took them all on by herself. I had taken care of the last straggler, but only because Lady Roxy left him pretty much at death's door. The castle was safe, all thanks to her. Lady Roxy, please, I said. I can't take any credit for what happened here. Oh, but you must. You defeated one of the bandits, too. I had a reason for avoiding official involvement, Riffle and his siblings. If they discovered that I'd helped another holy knight while I was meant to be on duty in service to their house, they'd go berserk. I had no idea what they'd do to me, but given how Riffle felt about Lady Roxy, I was certain I'd be in for an even harsher education session. If Lord Riffle hears about this, I said, it's not going to be good for me. Ah, I see. Very well. I'll do as you suggest. Thank you. No, please, I should be thanking you. If you hadn't told me about those bandits, I would have been the laughing stock of the Holy Knights. It seemed there were power struggles even among the highest echelons. But, being of such low status, I had no way of knowing how demanding those struggles were. Then you must let me show my gratitude, Lady Roxy said. No, no. I couldn't let a holy knight do such a thing. Lady Roxy wasn't a fan of my dogged modesty, and her cheeks puffed up into a pout. It surprised me. She usually never let her chivalrous mean drop. I felt as though I'd grown just a touch closer to her. Ah, I've got it. Lady Roxy clapped her hands, though the gesture felt somewhat forced. My heart pounded. I knew she intended to reward me, whether I liked it or not, but I didn't know what was coming. I never could have imagined what she said next. Would you consider working for the Hart family? If I told my father about what happened here, I'm certain he would agree to hire you. What? But, I don't even have any skills, and I'm, I'm not worthy. That isn't true at all. Did you not just now defeat a bandit by your own hand? That had been little more than dumb luck. If I were made to do it again, I would certainly fail. But I. Frustrated by my indecisiveness, Lady Roxy spelled it out. If you're worried about the Velaric family, allow me to take care of them. Or do you intend to work under them for the rest of your life? She saw right through me. She knew I was concerned about what the Velaric family might do to enjoy themselves at my expense. Even then, she still wanted to hire me. I could have cried. In front of me lay two paths, a future in which Riffle and his siblings used and discarded me, and I died of overwork, and beside that, a brighter life, a brighter future, under the kind and beautiful Lady Roxy. I didn't need to think twice. I was already one of Lady Roxy's devotees. This was like a dream come true. Lady Roxy, I said, I accept your offer. Excellent. Well, it's late, so you should go home. Come to Hart Manor at noon the day after tomorrow. I'll be waiting. I was so happy, I could have exploded, but I held it in. I bowed over and over with gratitude until finally I headed home. When I was far enough away that the castle gate was no longer visible, I jumped for joy. Luck had finally turned my way. I felt as if I were floating. It was all too good to be true. I bounded home to prepare for the day after tomorrow.